Hey YouTubers, welcome back for another adventure. So, where to start? Um, well, let's kind of skip right to the middle. Harvey got to play with a whole bunch of redneck machining. Um, I had this three-wheeler, it's a Honda ATC 200S, and I said, you know what, I think I'm just going to part it out. And I couldn't get myself to do it because it actually ran and so forth. And its biggest problem was the front wheel was completely jacked. It has the wrong front wheel on the wrong uh, on the right forks, but completely jacked up. And I started looking around to find the right front wheel and all that, and I really couldn't. And while I was looking, I found a complete 200S front end. And I said or 200X front end. And I said to myself, God, wouldn't it be great um, rather than just bring back an ATC 200S, which I have a bunch of, why don't I bring back something a little more interesting? I'll bring it back with a 200X front suspension. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is going to be great. Piece of cake. What person can't take out a bunch of bolts, slide, slide the triple tree shaft uh, into the front of it there, and bolt it all back together again, and you're all done. I mean, the trickiest thing is just using grease so all the ball bearings don't fall out and run away. So that's where it started, and from there things got completely weird. Um, I didn't want to cut up the original forks because for some reason if they have to go back on there right now I cut them up and I got no path back so these are a set of forks from an ATC 110 and you could see where the um, triple tree center um, is it's welded on so I had to cut it off so that right I mean you, you know you get out your your um, grinder no problem cutting it out of there once I did that and this is the 200x triple tree I realized that this shaft the 200s and um, 110 main uh, shaft steering shaft is uh, thinner less diameter so that was problem number one problem number two though it's longer on the um, 200s and ATC 110 um, it takes up a lot of space on the shaft because the castings don't aren't thin right this is welded right on the top piece is just a plate I mean very thin where you see how thick these are. So I'm like, oh man, I just got all kinds of a mess here. So to make it work, I have to match up to the, let's call it a triple tree bore shaft size length of the ATC 200S. All the X stuff, very nice to look at, but it's useless. The, uh, this is too thick to slide into um, the triple tree on the 200X. I mean, it's just, just a mess. So I take the whole thing apart. And this used to be right here, just like that. So I take this off and I grind this down so that it's, you know, not a square trying to go through a lathe. So I grind that on down, some mighty fine redneck uh, machining just with the grinder and so forth. And some of you know and some of you don't, but I have one of those, Harbor Freight used to sell them. I think you got to get them from Grizzly now, but I have one of their three-in-one machines. So, right this slides right into here and I cut this down right 
and then I take a bolt and I grind the head off of it and fit it in here so now this slips into the casting of the ATC 200X the bottom casting of that the aluminum casting right no longer welded on slips right on so I'm like good what other problems do I have well when I go to put it all together again I realize that now it's too short I can't um, reach the top casting so to speak so what do I do next so I cut the shaft and you know right in here and uh, first I did a nice scribe with this thing a nice deep scribe then I put the hacksaw to it and then uh, cut it through and I took a another bolt cut the head of it off ground the, the threads down because I wanted it to fit in here nice and tight and I set it up because I needed this about a half inch longer so that there would be the th additional threads to go through the casting so I got all that done and I'm all kinds of happy and then I realize that the upper casting is still kind of loose so here comes a bunch more machine work I take my one inch step drill and you can see how it's kind of drill down in there and you can see there's nice steps in there and then this is the upper retainer for this thing it holds the bearings in place right that's the bearing retainer there's another bearing retainer then this thing actually I guess tensions those preloads them or whatever you want to call it so anyway I machine this down drilled that out so this is a nice tight fit in here and the way it all finishes up is that's a tight fit in there then you tighten this bolt which brings this down tight right these are clamped to the um, shocks on both sides and on the bottom this will go right into the bottom like that and then once once again I'll be able to um, put a couple washers in here of just the right size and tighten this down and that'll hold it down on the bottom so about putting a set of 200x forks on a um, ATC 200 S right S forks or X forks on an S you could do it but boy it's a whole load of work a whole load of redneck machining but when it's done I think I think the bike will be um, a little better I think what it's gonna do it's gonna um, kick the forks out with a little more rake on it I think the front suspension um, of a 200x is uh, much better it'll be a better ride um, and I the front tire being a little a little narrower I, I think it will give it a little a little different handling personality hopefully improved so I, I I think it'll be worth the trouble though I must say I got quite quite a bit of time into this what's also less amusing is what I needed to avoid this whole thing was this right here right that's what I needed so I, I went through my hoard of stuff and quite honestly I couldn't find one so somebody had one with nice fresh brake shoes on it delivered to the house 60 bucks well wasn't thrilled with parting with 60 bucks for this but once again given that it was complete and the whole shoot and match and the brake shoes were new heck the brake shoes are almost 20 bucks right there cost them close to 20 bucks in postage so you know I did okay and as soon as I bought this that one showed up 
<laughs> that one showed up and this one most recently showed up I mean complete the bolt the whole shoot and match so um, I guess I just there are pluses and minusing to having a whole word of stuff um, what I feel good about is I did save the front the original 200 s front forks and now I have a full assembly so should I decide or run into a need to put that elsewhere, I have it and it's all ready to go. Or if this whole situation doesn't work out, I have it all, all ready to go. Um, and no, I'm not parting with it because I have too much time, effort, and work in it. But um, I also created something a little more interesting, a little unique, which um, I also look forward to spending some time uh, writing. So, a little redneck machining. Anyway, figured I'd uh, bring you guys and let you see what I've been up to for the last several days. Um, between buying the parts, the nuts, the bolts, the, y you know, cutting everything into shape, getting it all ready to go. Um, you know, rescuing stuff from collapsing barns and all to put this whole thing together. Any, I, I kind of enjoy doing this kind of stuff. It's, it's, an, it's a little more interesting. If it would have gone together easily, y you know, it would be done. But that's less interesting than the challenge of doing this machine work. And just to, um, to show also, it wasn't just one simple thing that fixed it. It wasn't just cutting and machining this. I mean, I had lengths to adjust for and... Um, um, uh, fitting I guess I'm going to use the word fitting to do to make it so that things aren't loose and chattering about um, and all of it done with fairly routine well the, obviously the uh, the um, lathe isn't a routine tool but um, that cut could have been done with a grinder. That was obviously done with a grinder. I mean, this could have actually been shaped with a grinder. I didn't remove all that much. Um, this part would have been a little harder to do with a grinder. But quite honestly, if you have a decent eye and some patience and take your time, you can actually do this. I, I did a lot of the um, initial forming. And then... Um, and then and then went went to the uh, lathe, right? I mean, try to put that to a lathe. Every time the bit catches one of these corners, it'll it'll stop. So you got to kind of grind it into shape. So a fine example of some redneck machining. I want to thank everybody who watched, who uh, will share their comments. Um, should you do this work, please remember to wear your safety glasses um, after going to an eye surgeon for the third time to get metal fished out of my eye and the third time I was actually wearing a cheap uh, fitting uh, a, a cheap pair of bad fitting goggles and some metal got around that and still got in my eye um, I really really recommend wearing proper eye protection gloves and everything else necessary to keep yourself safe um, God only gave you two eyes, so, you know, try not to, to lose one of them doing silly things. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Please remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.